Hello and good morning, and I hope you're having go, planning to have a very scrap happy day. Um, we all don't have the same amount of stitching time, and uh, I am fortunate, uh, being as old as I am and retired for many years, I have a lot of time at home to myself, so I get to stitch a lot, and I I love that about this time of my life. So. Uh, <clears throat> that being said, I wanted to show you a new project, uh, another way to use scraps. Uh, one thing that if you've uh, subscribed to my channel or you've watched many of mine, you know that the majority of everything I do here is with scraps. And uh, I just love showing the power that scraps have to transform into just about anything you can dream up. And so we are never have to cut our hands short in the sense that we have scraps, but we don't have anything to make. We have everything to make if we have some scraps. And this is one of them. <clears throat> this is a um, first of a series of mats that I'm going to be doing uh, for a, a new kitchen table that my husband made for me. And uh, I'm going to be taking a photo of that and injecting it somewhere in this video so you'll be on the lookout for that and I will be taking you from start to finish on this uh, project not every me stitching every line but uh, I will be doing this in segment sections so that we can complete the video in this this one uh, video uh, what I'm using here is, um, I don't even know what size this is. I started just with a piece that I had already cut. I didn't even measure to see what it was. It is um, right at seven inches by seven and three quarter inches. Now I need a series of mats of all kinds to put down my table. My table is eight feet long. It's super long. It'll sit 10 people very comfortably but it's homemade and it's a country kind of table and we do a lot of hospitality in that we love to feed our uh, friends and family and so we need a needed a table that would sit quite a few people and <clears throat> so down this table because it is wood planks uh, I need mats so that I can set things on it to save the surface of my table. So I'm going to be making a series of, of different things uh, for my table out of my scraps. And this is the first one. And I wanted to show you how I bind uh, something with my snippets. Uh, you know, binding when is very traditional in quilting. And there's, there's several ways to bind, but they all basically are the same thing. Well, this one's truly a little different, okay? You can see here one edge that I've finished off. It is bound. It has a finished edge. Now, my back I haven't finished yet, but it has a finished edge. It wraps over and binds the edge of this mat. And I have done hand stitching for decorative avenue. I have machine stitched the very edge. That's for the strength of the piece. But then I added hand stitching because I want that to show. Now, this looked like this before I stitched it down. You can see that it's all kinds of pieces of snippet size uh, pieces, okay? And so then I machine stitched down that edge. So they're very secure and the uh, raw edge is covered. And then I will be hand stitching again, just for the look of the handwork uh, on top of that. Now, how did I do that? Well, what I did was, is I took some snippets and I just stitched them together, kind of like you would piece uh, a strip for a quilt, okay? Now you could do this by machine or you can do it by hand. I happen to have done this one by hand, okay? I did it for the length. Let's turn this to the back. Now what I will do is I will take this and I will 
sew it. I think I need it on the shorter end, yes. I will sh stitch it right side up, right side up, that's very important. I will stitch it right side up along this edge like that, okay? You can see that's what I've done along here. You can see that I have laid it down and stitched it right side up, all right? What happens then is that when I turn this over, Then I can turn this, I find all my pieces here, there you go. I When I, when I wrap this uh, snippet binding over, then I sew a quarter inch with my sewing machine. That totally secures that edge, okay? It binds that entire edge and it's totally made out of snippets and it comes up out with this very scrappy look on the front side which is decorative and scrappy and I just love that okay so it will look like this all the way around uh, I do each side separately I just find it easier to do that I don't try to handle a great big long piece of one of these as you can see they're kind of hard to handle just long enough but that is how I am using it as binding it's very forgiving in that it has play in it like um, a bias piece of fabric cut on the bias does and so I can push and pull and get it where I need it to go and you can see how nice it lays down once it's once it's machine sewn over here now you can hand sew all this but machine sewing for what I'm going to use it for because it's this is going to have to go in the wash washing machine and uh, while these little edges will fray, everything is going to stay down well, okay? And uh, so I, I just think that's gorgeous. Now, I haven't completed the stitching on this part either. I still have these to do. These are all straight lines. This one I started with a little bit of a curve, and I'm going to follow that through, and then I'm going to curve a little bit at a different angle on that side. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to add this little motif uh, to the center and, and stitch around it just, just to cover up that dead center piece right there. I'm going to do it like that. And it's flat, so it doesn't cause a raised uneven surface when I, when I set something on it. And it's cream on cream, which looks nice. But I'm, oh, I'm so pleased with this already. This is on a heavy piece of uh, quilt batting. And uh, you, you can also use uh, uh, felt, anything like that that you wanted to use. I'm about out of this quilt batting, so I'm going to be getting some uh, uh, felt uh, the next time I'm at the uh, fabric store. And uh, I will be using some of my pieces with felt backing. Uh, they don't have to be super thick or anything else. They're not exactly designed for hot pads. Although, you you know, I wouldn't put a really hot uh, pot off the stove on one of these. Um, I might stack them up two or three if I wanted to use them that way. But basically, these are simply to set other dishes on that save my table uh, top, okay? The, the look of it, the finish of it. And you'll understand that a little bit more when you when you actually see the little clip that I'm going to insert for the table itself. So anyway, I thought you might want to try this. Uh, it's it makes a wonderful uh, uh, like doilies for side tables. It makes great mug mats and snack mats. It uh, makes um, wonderful. You could make uh, pot holders out of it. You could do. Uh, just regular uh, heat pads, you know, you could put the uh, waterproof backing on it. You could do all kinds of things with it. Uh, but using this kind of binding, using up your scraps that you already have to make your binding, 
Uh, it takes just a little bit more uh, to decorative stitch it, but you know, who cares? <laughs> we love stitching. So, but okay, uh, we'll, we'll be back. I'll be back with uh, uh, another segment in this video where I've taken this feather. And uh, so you uh, stay with me, all right? Well, what do you think? Isn't that an adorable way to bind a small project? It's different, it's interesting, it uses scraps, nothing bigger than snippet cuts. It's not hard. Uh, hand sewing, it gives you the chance to show a little bit of your stitching, hand sewing. It's just so adorable and so different that I just love it and I'm gonna be using it in more of my small projects that I do wanna put a binding on. I did take that little motif that I cut out of uh, a lace piece and just put it on with a little bit of pink uh, lace. Let me bring you up so you can see more what I'm doing. And uh, then I finished the stitching, just straight stitches out through uh, the background, okay? Then on the back, I put a, a backing piece and I just hand uh, turned it and pinned it to the edges so it would fit. I've put the first row of stitches across there with pink thread. I'm going around once with pink and then probably come around a second time with a cream color. I'm going to do two rows simply because uh, this is going to be uh, an object that's used and put in the washing machine. <clears throat> so I want it to be able to uh, take the wear and tear. These pieces here will fray a little on the edges and that's perfectly fine. That adds to the raggy, scrappy look and uh, the country kitchen type thing that I have going on. And uh, But otherwise, they're sewn down good. They're gonna be there from now on, okay? Nice little hot pad, nice um, presentation for setting a bowl of salad or vegetables or something on the plate, uh, on the table, and uh, have it have a mat to sit on. Okay, I hope you really enjoyed this because I know I did, and uh, I hope you'll use this uh, method, utilize some of those uh, snippet cuts that you've got and all that scrap fabric that you've caught, and just uh, bind some of your small wall hangings, small wall quilts, whatever you wanted to do. You could do a big quilt, I guess, with this, but um, that would be a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. So anyway, that's a wonderful scrappy snippet binding. Till next time, everybody, find a way to stay scrap happy. <laughs>